Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 96 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of the confluent balloon and the CART technique for CTO PCI. The patient presented with exertional angina and had inferior ischemia on nuclear stress test. Baseline and geography demonstrated a CTO of the proximal right coronary artery. There was a blunt stop with multiple small branches originating proximal to the proximal cap. The distal vessel was filling via a diffusely diseased vein graft with a severe distal anastomotic lesion. There was retrograde filling all the way to the mid right coronary artery. Therefore, we had a blunt proximal cap, approximately 40 50 millimeters occlusion length good quality distal vessel and we did have a vein graft supplying the PDA. The patient was referred for PCI of the native right coronary artery because the risk of both acute and chronic complications by intervening on the anastomosis of the vein graft was considered to be more than decanalizing the native right coronary. We therefore uh, proceeded with dual access. The vein graft was engaged with a multi-purpose 8 friends guide, the right coronary with an 8 friends AL1 guide catheter, and then we were able to easily advance a guide wire down the vein graft into the posterior descending artery, and then using the venture microcatheter, which can take a bend at the distal tip, we were able to advance the wire retrograde into the distal RCA and the mid RCA, and then advance a knuckle wire from the mid RCA all the way to the proximal RCA. By doing this, we now have a better understanding of the course of the vessel in the proximal right coronary artery, and this was used as a target for undergrade crossing attempts. We tried to cross using the cross post catheter, which initially went in the right direction, but then it appears to be taking uh, an outside course from the course of the retrograde guide wire and eventually we changed to an undergrade guide wire that um, was advanced subintimally into the mid and distal right coronary artery. We then perform what's called the confluent balloon technique in which we advance a retrograde balloon over the retrograde guide wire and an undergrade balloon which are inflated simultaneously in the same location in the mid right coronary artery and by doing that what we achieve is those two spaces, that subintimal spaces to merge and create one larger space. This may be hard to do when the collaterals are small, but here, since we had a vein graft, it was fairly easy to advance a retrograde balloon and place it side by side with an undergrade balloon catheter. After doing this, we then use the so-called car technique in which an undergrade wire is advanced trying to take the space created from inflation of the two balloons and indeed after some attempts going into the subminimal space finally the undergrade guide wire did take the course into the distal true lumen and now it's advancing easily adjacent to the retrograde microcatheter and guide wire and this is the illustration of the car technique we have the proximal cap and the distal cap wires are advanced from both sides into the subintimal space and then a balloon is advanced over the retrograde guide wire. The balloon is inflated, creating a space that communicates with the distal true lumen. And then an undergrade wire is advanced into the space created from the retrograde guide wire. In the confluent balloon technique we did in this particular case, everything is the same with the difference that now we had actually two balloons who have both a retrograde and an undergrade balloon, creating an even larger space and facilitating advancement of the undergrade guide wire into the distal true lumen. After that, uh, stents were placed in the mid and proximal right coronary artery, and that provided a nice final result with Timothy flow into the distal right coronary artery. We did not embolize or coil the vein graft. There's a debate as to whether the vein grafts should be coiled afterwards, but we did think that this graft had a severe distal anastomotic lesion and was likely to occlude by itself without requiring coiling. So this case brings up several interesting points. The first one is that in patients who have very diseased vein grafts or vein grafts with disease are sensitive locations like the anastomosis distally, it may be hard to treat and treating the native coronary artery, if feasible, may be preferable because it has probably less risk acutely as well as chronically for restenosis. It also demonstrates the value of the confluent balloon technique, 
which could be used in this case because we had a nice retrograde conduit from the vein graft, as well as the card technique, which is not commonly used these days because reverse card and the guideline and reverse card are the most commonly used modalities. The reason that these are more commonly used is because it's easier to advance a balloon over the undergrade guide wire and use this space as a target to advance the retrograde guide wire instead of having to advance balloons over the retrograde guide wire. 